Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and we're going to talk about Star Trek Adventures, and we're going to talk about scene containers. And I want to contrast Dungeons and Dragons VE, that's the new, brand new uh, version of Dungeons and Dragons, the new, the first tabletop role playing game, non incremental new edition, right? So, fifth edition, now there's VE, uh, the 2024 core rule books. And we're shifting into the new edition. I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons VE versus Modifius 2D20 Star Trek Adventures. And I want to talk about scene containers and television shows and tabletop role playing games overall. All right, let's jump into this. So I've been incredibly blessed. I just finished a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Arbor Adventures, uh, and, it, and you'll see the link below. You can see, you know, everything we went through. You'll see a, a nice long playlist of, you know, showing this Dungeons and Dragons adventure that I ran. Um, 12 sessions, right? And then me and the same player went directly into a Star Trek Adventures campaign. And uh, so, you know, back to back, Star Trek Adventures, Dungeons and, Dungeons and Dragons, then Star Trek Adventures. And one of the things I'm realizing is I'm shocked how much the talking scenes in Star Trek fit and are natural and are exciting rather than Dungeons and Dragons, right? And so basically, um, in in Dungeons and Dragons, we we ran this adventure with a sun elf rogue assassin, right, named Dolos. And now, in Star Trek Adventures, there's a security crewman Archibald, right? And so Dolos would roll up into a, a tavern and he would talk to the prosperous innkeeper. And the whole time it was like, okay, where is you gonna find your next your next adventure where you go out and you, um, you know, you find a creature to slay? Where are you gonna get your next uh, magic item? And, you know, and we're talking to this prosperous innkeeper but when's this talking scene going to be over? When are we going to get to kill something? When are we when are we going to get a new magic item? You know, when is there going to be a new trap? When is something exciting going to happen? And then I realized when we went over to the Star Trek Adventures uh, game, it wasn't like this, right? And and he could have um, conversations with he. We're we're running in Star Trek Enterprise Series One. So there's conversations with Jonathan Archer. There's conversations with Tucker. There's conversations with Sato. There's conversations with Phlox. We've had these amazing conversations between security crewman Archibald and Dr. Phlox, right? And just these, and there's like a friendship. There's there's palpable friendship, right? It's just so powerful and real and it fits so well, right? And I realized the reason why these conversations are fitting and there isn't this stress of what item did I get from this? What what where did I find out the next thing I want to kill? Where did I find out the next place where you know I can advance the plot? Right, like because these relationships are just really so. One, Doctor Flax is a real character, right? And that actor really put gravitas into that character, and it's really profound and incredible, right? And I just was really stunned at like how much the talky parts of Star Trek Adventure fit. And I figured it out, right? So it's the it's the fact that there was a television show, right? And there are hundreds of these episodes that we that meet both me, the dungeon master of Star Trek Adventures, and the gold player of Star Trek Adventures, we know this rhythm, right? These talking sessions are filled with gravitas and love and friendship and attention, you know, tension sometimes, right? And these scenes just fit in a container, like water filling a cup, right? And it just feels very natural and it feels exciting even when nothing is being killed, even when there's no new item getting, you know, gotten, even when there's no mystery being solved. These talking parts feel extremely natural and valuable in Star Trek Adventures because of the television show. And I realized, right, why do these talking parts not fit in Dungeons and Dragons nearly as well or at all, right? 
And I think the reason why is we have never had a real fantasy show. Not once. We've never had wizard, fighter, rogue, cleric, right? We've never had a band of adventurers who completed an adventure and went to the next adventure, right? We've never had this show. Wait, Scott, what about the Star Trek 9th? What about the 1983 Dungeons and Dragons cartoon? Yes, we did have that. 41 years ago as an animated show that had to survive for kids, right? It's limited. It doesn't do what we need. It's very old, right? If you watch it today, it doesn't, you know, the pacing is wrong, right, from what we're used to today. The animation is off, right? It just doesn't serve. It's a great show. I love it. I'm passionate about it, right? But it, but there, but you know, I just finished Star Trek: Stranger, Strange New Worlds. I just finished Star Trek. You know, the latest season of Star Trek: Lower Decks. I just finished Star Trek: Prodigy. These are real, actual, right now shows, right? And and it's important, right? And so it's really cool, right? And I realized we need these shows. We badly need these Dungeons and Dragons shows, right? We need. Hollywood actors to show us what Dristo Orton sounds like, right? Um, what he looks like when he stands on a cliff and the wind blows his cape. We don't know yet, right? And we've had a bit of this, but not hundreds of episodes. And so Star Trek Adventures is riding on these Hollywood rails of quality and production and passion right? And Dungeons and Dragons deserves it, but we don't have it yet, right? And it just, you know, I realized, man, like, I've been so blessed. I've been so blessed to see every day of Dungeons and Dragons happened in my life. I was four years old when Dungeons and Dragons was born, right? And I'm so, I'm so happy about that, right? But I really believe that Amazon or Disney or Netflix um, you know, or Paramount Plus are going to make that Duns and Dragons show and bring it to life, right? And allow us to get the cup that we can pour the water into. And I think it's going to be incredibly helpful. And I have to say, I am absolutely loving Star Trek Adventures. It is really powerful, uh, really fantastic, and I'm and I'm really, you know, feeling a lot of shine for this Duns and Dragons competitor, Star Trek Adventures. But I also want, I just feel passionately, Dungeons and Dragons deserves a show. And we haven't gotten it. And we deserve it. And Dungeons and Dragons deserves it. And Hollywood is keeping something from us that we should have, in my humble opinion. Every single word you just heard is my humble opinion. The important part is when I hear your humble opinion. When you get in the comments and send your traffic, please consider liking and subscribing and have a fetch millennium.